That didn't stop. Let's try it that time. There we go. Nope. Why is it still playing? There, we'll go right to the source. There we go. Oh, almost ready. Welcome back, everybody. June 3. June 3rd. Man, where is this year going? Um, it's June, and I'm, I'm wearing my leather coat. It is, uh, it's crazy. This morning, I woke up to temperatures in the mid-40s. Ugh. Crazy, crazy, crazy that it's that cold this late in the year. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm coming home a different way. Uh, I do this because I'm tired of taking the same route. And when I'm on the spider, I can get a nice ride in on my way home. And then that kind of frees up my evening. I don't have to go out for a ride. You know, like if I drive the car, I, I get home, I want to go for a ride. So this is kind of knocking out two birds with one stone. And uh, you're going to have to excuse the windscreen. Um, I just did a marathon trip to North Carolina and back. Almost a thousand miles in two days. And then hopped right back on the spider this morning and uh, rode to work. So, uh, you know, the spider's getting a workout. And I have broke the 60,000 mile mark on this thing. Um, you know, that, that's crazy if you think about it. Um, I got to get into my comments because someone commented about, you know, I spent $1,800 at 50,000 miles on maintenance. And they were like, you seemed um, aggravated or upset about it. And it wasn't an aggravation. It was more of a, wow, that's uh, that's quite a bit of money. But you got to look at the miles, too. You know, how many people are going to put 50,000 miles on a motorcycle in two years? So, you know, it was just kind of a, wow, that's, that's a decent amount of money for maintenance. But... It had 50,000 miles on it, you know, so now I have 60,000 miles on it. And the maintenance, I think, went up in oil change <laughs> since the 50, maybe two, you know, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so with it still fresh in my head, uh, you know, I knocked out 1,000 miles in two days on a base model F3. So, uh, you know, can you tour on an F3? So I have the base model F3. And it's the only, I guess we can call them options I got was the Blue Ridge windscreen, which is a mess with bugs from the south. Um, they have different bugs than we do up here. They're bigger and buggier. Um, I have the Shad saddlebag, so I, I have decent storage for trips. Um, and then we have the non-adjustable BRP backrest. So the first thing that I notice when I ride, um, especially if I'm going a, a long distance, is if the seat, and I mean, this is a base model F3, the seat sucks. But I mean, you buy any motorcycle, and uh, more than likely, that's the first thing you're gonna update, upgrade, is uh, is the seat. So I use an Airhawk. Uh, I've tried two different ones. The, the standard Airhawk works best for me. The Airhawk R does not work. You know, everybody has a different button. That button needs different things. And uh, mine does not like the R whatsoever at all. You know, so a basic Airhawk does good. I can knock out 500 miles in a day and I can walk when I'm off the spider. Uh, am I in perfect shape? Nope. But, you know, after 500 miles of sitting on top of a spider, maybe if you had an RT, you know, maybe. Um, the second thing is that, uh, that kind of fails on my body is the buffeting. The buffeting is horrible with the Blue Ridge windscreen. Um, if you're looking to buy an F3 and you want to throw down some serious miles, and I'm not talking about the F3T or the F3 Limited. This is only the F3, you know, the F3 and the F3S. Um, unless you were under five foot five, I would not recommend the Blue Ridge windscreen. 
It, it's too far forward and it's too low and it lets the air drop and it hits me right in the visor and the upper shoulders and uh, you do get a ton of buffeting to the point where if you're getting a strong headwind you can't read signs it, it's bad like I see three of those little white cars um, a Subaru um, it's just how it is so you know the F3 you can throw some miles down but I would not recommend you spending the amount of money it is for a Blue Ridge windscreen you know check out someone else check out F4 customs I hear really good things about their screens I've seen a couple of their screens and they look pretty good um, customer service sounds to be amazing uh, a guy cracked his and called him up and said hey I cracked it installing it and they sent him a new one so okay so what's next um, the buffeting Ugh. so after a while my hands and, and wrists really fatigued um, now I've, I've worked in the shop for 22 years and my hands are just beat up um, they constantly hurt they, they swell I have arthritis I have broken knuckles and hands I mean when you work in a shop you just your hands just get destroyed so part of it is that and part of it is I think the reach is good um, the grips are okay you know I could get those big soft squishy ones to give me a little bit more relief but I think the issue mainly is I don't have cruise control so I'm always gripping the bar uh, you know I, I can relax and shake out the left one a lot easier than the right hand so, you know, definitely look if you're going to be throwing down some miles. BRP has an amazing cruise control. Uh, you set it, you forget it. It holds you at like a mile from where you set it. If you set it at 70, it's going to hold you at 70. Uh, my STS, I don't think it, it, if I set it at 70, hardly ever did I see it see 69 or 71. If you don't go with cruise control, I would definitely go with a throttle lock of some time, some kind, just so you can drop your right hand and shake it out. And you know, I, I need to invest in that. I thought I would be able to upgrade to cruise control with the base model by simply buying a switch, but apparently nothing is there. The switch, the computer, nothing for cruise control on a base model F3. Okay. Now, because I have a base model F3, I also have floorboards. So what do we got? We've, we're number four. And what are we doing here? We be stopping. We stopping? We going? We stopping? We going? We got, rid it, rid it. <clears throat> we're slowing down. Um, so I don't have floorboards, I have foot pegs. I think I said, I don't know, Ugh, one of those days. So I'm able to move around on these pegs pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, I can use them as pegs. Where the pegs mount to this crossbar, I can put my heel on the crossbar and then the top of my foot on the peg. Is this where we're stopping? Come on. See, and this is, this is the flat farmland of Ohio. So I can put my foot on top of the peg and then on top of the crossbar where the peg mounts. Oh, that's a nice tractor. And it's super comfortable. Um, so I don't, I, I do get tired of just being on pegs, hanging your feet off of pegs, because that's what you do. Um, I got these in the fourth position. They're not in the third. If they were in the third position, I might be able to keep my feet straight down, but I think my knees would be up too tall and I wouldn't be comfortable. So they're in the fourth position. I am 5'11", 29, maybe 30 inch inseam. We'll call it a 29. I don't have long legs. Um, and four might be out there a little bit too much because I do hang my feet off of the pegs. So it, it is nice that I can, uh, I can move them around. So, you know, I can put my heel on the crossbar. I can put the palm of my foot right on the, uh, the peg itself and I can move my feet around I can I can hang my foot off the top and front of the peg I don't like that too awful much um, but it, it is a third position just to, to move around you know if you're eight hours on your spider you're looking for places that you can move around on the spider to become a little bit more comfortable or whatever you're on 
So I think that was four things, and uh, only one of them, you know, you just, there's no work around it, and that's the windscreen. Um, you know, cruise control, you can get a, a throttle lock or a cramp buster buddy thing. I, I had one of those, I didn't like it. So I just hold the bar, and it is what it is. You know, the seat, $100 air hock, it, it, it does, for me, a great job. And I have decent amount of storage with the shad bags. I would say the, the last thing, the fifth thing that I, I probably need to invest in. I have the backrest, so all I need to do is get a dry bag, and I can throw it on the seat behind me, and I can put so much stuff in a dry bag, it's not even funny. And it, it's a relatively comfortable. I'm a big boy, and I, you know I, I love my F3. It, it's it's very sporty. It handles very well, and it gets the job done when it comes to touring. And of course, you know you're going to be able to find better touring machines. This is not a touring machine, but you can do it with just a couple simple little upgrades. So I think I'm going to let everybody go as I come into town. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Drop a comment below. You know, what did I forget? You know, what have you done to your F3 to make it more personal, to make it a better cruiser, to make it a better touring machine? Stay safe, everybody. I'll see you in a couple days.